All right, now we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Now I wanna to talk to you about syncing, sharing projects uh, in a little bit more depth. I wanna talk about bookmarks because that's a uh, very popular feature. I wanna talk about navigation between documents, a little bit about tagging, and a little bit about uh, something called highlight view that I think you'll like. Okay, so the first thing I wanna mention is syncing. Now, again, I used Liquid Text. I've been using Liquid Text for this demo today on my iPad, but I could just as well, of course, have done that on my Windows machine. Now, I know some folks are interested in learning a little bit more about how do you use Liquid Text on multiple machines? Well, Liquid Text actually has a, a real-time synchronization engine uh, that runs on our proprietary backend that uh, lets you actually use it on multiple machines at once. Now, here we have a user who's using Liquid Text on her desktop and her iPad with the same project at the same time. And so you see, as she does something on her iPad, look at that, it instantly reflects on the desktop as well. See, it updates within about a second. This is great because there are some things that just really lend themselves to a big screen desktop. Like for example, organizing large groups of, uh, of notes and excerpts, looking for patterns, grouping them and so on. And you see, she can do that, that on the desktop and it's reflected immediately on the iPad. At the same time, it's very hard to use a desktop for freehand inking. And a lot of people, especially after going paperless, are gonna to wanna to be doing freehand inking. And you see, within about a second, the ink on her iPad appears on her desktop. So let's take another case. Let's say she's doing a document comparison on her desktop. She brings up the two documents side by side, which again is a great thing to do on the big screen. And she sees a relationship between them. She wants to capture it using an ink link. So she just draws that ink link on the desktop. And you see it appears on the iPad and she can follow that link there to get to the same location. What this means is she can use her devices at the same time using whichever one at a given moment makes the most sense for that point in her workflow. So let's start, talk a little bit about sharing projects. So you saw a moment ago to share projects in Liquid Text, you just go to the top bar, you go to the right and you click on the share button here and you have a few options. Now, we already talked about notes outline, but let's talk about these other two. The first one is sending a liquid, te a liquid text file. Uh, this actually takes all of your documents, your notes, your workspaces, everything in this whole liquid text project and wraps it into one nice self-contained LT proj file that you can send off to your colleagues. They can work on it, edit it, send it back to you, whatever they need. Now, of course, you're gonna say, well, you know, gosh, that's very nice but is it possible to just invite them into my existing project without having to send them the file? And the answer is, we agree that would be very nice to do. Um, we're actually working on it now. Our engineering teams are just finishing that up. We're hoping to have it in beta uh, before the end of the month and released uh, non, in non-beta in uh, March. So again, right now, if you wanna share a liquid text project, the easiest thing is just use this, send uh, the other person the full liquid text project file, but you'll be able to actually invite people into your project uh, within probably the next six to eight weeks. Okay, so the next point, let's talk about bookmarks. So we'll just make some space here. Okay, so let's go over to our documents list. Uh, and actually let's go back to the petition because that'll be a little bit easier, okay. And now you'll notice there's a little slider here between documents and outline. If I select outline, it shows me the table of contents for the document. I can of course select these, jump back and forth between them and so on. But the other nice thing I can do is I can actually create bookmarks. So for example, if I wanna create a bookmark to this point, I can simply select it and click on bookmark. And you see the app adds a bookmark in right there and it puts a little bookmark icon uh, next to the text I selected. Likewise, I can also create a bookmark uh, without actually even selecting any text just by going to the desired page and clicking on the add bookmark button. And you see, it adds the bookmark right there. And of course, I can just jump back and forth between these. As you would expect, I can click the three dots to rename a bookmark, delete it, copy a link to it. Uh, what you would not expect though is I can actually even tag bookmarks so you can better find them and organize them later. But that's a little bit of a power user thing. We're not gonna go into that right now. All right, now let's talk a little, little bit about navigating between your different documents. So we'll go back to the slider here. We'll click on documents. Now we get back to our documents list. 
Now, the easiest way to navigate between documents is simply by clicking on the title, clicking on the name of the document in the documents list. But that's great if you have, let's say, four documents, as in this case. But many people use Liquid Text with many thousands of documents. So what do you do there? Well, there we have a couple more advanced tools for you. As you saw, you can organize your documents into folders and subfolders and so on. You also can filter them. So if we wanted to find anything with litigation in the title, we could start typing LIT and you see it filters down to the relevant uh, documents. The other way of navigating between documents, of course, just to emphasize is you can simply click uh, excerpts that refer to those documents and you see it'll instantly take you right back to whatever document it refers to. And of course, this works for your ink links as well. And finally, the last way to navigate between documents uh, is by using that same uh, just start typing ability. So for example, if I wanna get to the constitution, I can just start typing C-O-N-S and you notice it brings up that context sensitive dialog box, but now there's a new option on it because it found a document in my documents list named Constitution of India that has the phrase C-O-N-S in it. It gives it to me as an option right here. And then I can just scroll right down, click it, and it takes me right to the Constitution. So the idea is we want to make it very, very efficient for you to navigate back and forth between your different documents and your different sources. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about something called tagging. For that, we're going to go to a different project that's uh, that's pre-completed for us here. All right, excellent. So Liquid Text has this idea of tags, and let me talk a little bit about those. First, you can go click on the three dots on the top bar right over here and select Tag Manager. And here, Liquid Text will show you all the tags that exist in this project. In this case, I've created two tags so far. The tag for specific facts that I find in the case, does this particular fact support us or support us or support the other side? I can add additional tags, delete my tags, change them, and so on. Now, I've already gone through, tagged a bunch of pieces of text here. You see, I can click it and it'll say, this has been tagged with supports them. This has been tagged with supports us. And I'd like to add a couple more tags as well. So let's say, Let's say this point here, we, I think supports us well. I can just select it. And then you see when I select text, I have this little tags button here. If I click that, it shows me my tags right in line in the pop-up uh, pop context menu. I'll say this supports us. Likewise, I think this point actually supports the other side. And so see, I can just click on supports them. It couldn't be easier. We make it really easy and fast to tag things in liquid text. Now, I'll note that besides just tagging text, you can tag your excerpts. See right here. And you can even tag things like your documents. If a whole document, for example, pertains to a given tag. This is also a great way to uh, organize and uh, uh, help you navigate your documents when you have very large numbers of them. But for now, we'll just stick to tagging the document text. Okay. So once I've gone through and tagged these, you might say, how can I find the tag text quickly and easily? Well, this is one of the great things about liquid text. If I wanna find everything that's been tagged or highlighted, I can just use this function called highlight view. If I select highlight view, now, if I pinch my fingers against the screen, just like I did earlier to uh, uh, bring my search results together, it brings all of my tagged and highlighted text together like this, you see. If I pinch apart again, I see my context, if I pinch together, I see all of the overview of all my tagged and highlighted text at the same time. Now you say that's great, but at this point, I really wanna just focus on the points that are gonna support the other side. How can I do that? Well, that's actually one of the great things that we just recently added to Highlight View. If you press and hold the Highlight View button for a moment, you can actually select, uh, if you wanna filter your highlights and tags to uh, just particular particular tag text. So in this case, I wanna only find things that support them. I click it, click search for tags. And now when I pinch, you see liquid text only brings together the things that have been tagged with supports them. 
space that a little, add some context there. And then the wonderful thing is now I can just go to the workspace and start writing, for example, one, review this point, whatnot. And so I can start writing my responses here in the workspace of how I'm gonna deal with each of these points that, at this, that could potentially help support the other side. And then one of the best parts is I can then create ink links from the original document text right into the note that I'm writing. So you see you have this great workflow here of seeing the points that are relevant to you uh, on their own, but with as much context as you need, and then writing your notes about how you're going to address each of those points in court. And of course, since it's Inklink now, you can always get right back to it. Okay, terrific. So let's pause here for a moment. Can we use the iPad to drag and drop entire folders from OneDrive into Liquitext? Uh, yes, you can actually. The, here's actually a very good demo. So this is in OneDrive uh, and this is opposition proceedings. It actually has a whole nested list uh, of, of folders and of files. So let's drag that right in here. And now it says 10 separate projects or a single project. Let's do it as a single project. I'll just give it a second here. It's uh, gonna have to import all of the documents. You can see we have the entire hierarchy in here uh, with all of the different documents following the exact same folder structure as they had in OneDrive. SharePoint can be accessed through OneDrive. The SharePoint folders are visible in OneDrive. Next question, uh, do we have to save uh, work product in OneDrive after every, every revision? Does the new version, oops, uh, after every re revision, does the new version replace earlier versions or uh, are there multiple versions saved in OneDrive? Good question. So the way uh, Liquitext works, when you import documents into Liquitext, as we did in this, this is a perfect example of it, right? Um, we imported a whole bunch of documents from OneDrive. Liquitext makes a copy of those documents and brings that copy into the Liquitext infrastructure. Uh, so as I'm, let's say, highlighting, annotating, editing all this, it is not at this point making any changes to what's in OneDrive. The changes are all being done inside the Liquitext project. They have to be because things like your workspace, uh, things like ink links between documents, there isn't even a concept of that uh, in a standard PDF or, uh, or in OneDrive. Now, however, when you close the project, Liquitext will say, would you like to take the changes that you made in the document itself, such as these highlights and this inking and send copies or send those back to the originals in OneDrive? Uh, and then of course you can say yes, and then it'll send these annotations back to the originals in OneDrive. Okay, and let's say I take this document, make some highlights on it. And now I say close, it'll ask me, would I like to send the annotations back to the original in OneDrive? Now be clear, the annotations you've made are saved in Liquitext instantly, automatically. This is just about, do you want to send copies back to OneDrive as well? And so that's simply an option. It's your choice.